What's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We're back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where we get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. We have got a great guest with us today, someone who has uh, has been following us for a little bit and uh, and has seen some results as a result, uh, in other words. And so we're going to talk about how she's essentially pushed reset, uh, restart uh, on her real estate career and how that went and what she's seeing now and what she's experienced over the last few years of really implementing some of the things we've talked about on the show. So it's going to be a fun conversation. But first, the junior grandmaster himself, we are back in our boxes where we so belong. Greg McDaniel, what's up today? We are back in our boxes. Regrettably, you and I had our uh, race around in the SRT uh, mobile business meeting that we typically do when you're here in the Bay. It's a very standard operating procedure that we will we'll be in depth on a conversation, which we were. You were about ready to get out of the car. I'm like, no, no, no. Get in. We're going to go for a drive. And Matt's like, okay, roll up the window. And we just took off like bat, a bat out of hell and we're ripping down the freeway 100 to 125 miles an hour at some points. Just having a blast. That's right. Doing our thing. Um, um, unless you're unless you're a CHP officer listening, in which case we stuck very closely and obeyed no. all the relevant traffic laws. All the relevant traffic laws. Like we went over, we went to 68 miles an hour from 65 miles an hour. So okay. very very close to the miles That's per hour, right. you know, and everything. But uh, dude, I hit I um ever since I've been back in the gym, right? Um, I've been kind of you know pushing myself every day, every day, every day. Today I was a little, I was able to double my push-ups than when I started about a month and a half ago. So Fantastic. Was, so you're up to three now? I was waiting for the four comment. Like, so you went from two to four? <laughs> no, I figured you started a good one, one. and a half. I, I, gave, I gave you the half. I figured you started one and a half. <laughs> you jackass. Um, <laughs> no, but I'm super, super, super pumped out Beth here, man. She is just awesome. We had a great pre-show conversation. She is just ecstatic to be here with you guys. She's got so much cool stuff. Uh, to share kind of where she is, what she's done, kind of how, kind of what's what's propelled her. So, Beth, I've been looking forward to this call uh, and this video ever since you reached out to me. So I'm just so glad we were able to rebook you and welcome to Real Estate Thanks. Uncensored. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> you, you're well, you're welcome. And we're going to stay monitoring the entire show. The enthusiasm I, I, uh, is oozing out of me. Zero. So. <laughs> uh, so Beth, give us uh, give us a little background. Um, you you've been in real estate before you stumbled across us, and uh, so Thank give people an idea, idea of kind of how long you've been in the business, and what your primary market is like, um, and who you typically work with. Um, well, I've been in the business for ten years, and I pretty much work with any buyer, any seller. I mean, um, in this area, I mean, I don't know. Do you want price range? Do you want like what's yeah, going no, on? What's, 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 what's your what's your home market? <laughs> So, uh, I mean, that's the home average here. No, what's, you the, what's your home market? Where are you at physically? What city are you in? I am in Plymouth, Canton area. So, very nice little area in the Metro Detroit area. Metro so, Detroit. There we go. That's, yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what we're looking so for. You, you got a lot of different clients. Right. So, you know, so, right. so, I get it. You, you work with a lot of different clients. What's your, what's your favorite type yeah. of client to work with? Probably first-time buyers, definitely. Okay. You know, they're excited and ready to go and they're happy and it's, yeah, a lot of they're, fun. They're kind of like puppies running down the hallway, all ears and paws, yeah. and they trip and fall and land and slide yeah. right going down the hallway, and you pick them up, dust them off, like, <laughs> come here, <laughs> little fuzzy ball of goodness. Let's get you a house. Yeah, yeah, yeah a lot exhausting. of fun. <laughs> That's because you don't like people, Matt. You are like Howard Hughes of real estate. We have talked about this. You pee in bottles. Oh, All right. Um, so I've got I've got a question to to throw at you guys to to get us uh, get us started, and then we'll dive into Beth into your kind of background and and how you stumbled okay. across us. But we we're talking a little a bit, little bit about this uh, pre-show, and I wanted to make sure that we bring this to the uh, the live viewers and everybody that's listening after the fact. So this is a question that I spotted uh, from Jessica Kim. Says, it, has anyone experienced their newly input MLS listing not syndicating out to Zillow and Trulia? We've been live for 36 hours and it's still pulling up a two-year-old sold page for the property. All other sites are syndicating correctly and double check the settings in the MLS. Uh, never experienced this with over 80 listings across two different brokerages. So Greg, you were saying something like this just happened to you the other day? Yeah, it happened to us on Sunday. Uh, what we were uh, kind of experiencing is that um, uh, last week was just a knockout of the park success when it comes to our open house up in, in, in Pleasant Hill. And then okay. yesterday, uh, it, nothing had really changed, but there was just absolute crickets. I had two agents preview out of the four people that showed up. Um, mm -hmm. And then one couple that was coming from 
Oakland, I want to say. And this was too far out for them because the husband was a truck driver. And he needed to get, get over to the port, which I don't know why he was even looking over here in the first place. Um, and then the other people were just, you know, looking loo neighbors. So it was just Deadsville. Um, but it, it wasn't a total waste of time, which is good. But, I mean, for, for what were the, intent, the intensive purposes of, our, of this conversation, yeah, it was pretty brutal. So, so you're saying like the the open house results, you went and traced back to the fact that the like the home listing just didn't hit Zillow. Yeah, that's something that uh, Eileen had made you know brought to my attention um, and said, uh -huh. "Hey, Greg, did you know that like a lot of the listings didn't get posted?" And there's this huge laundry list of another email stream that Eileen had tapped into, and um, that is what we had found to be true. So we're like, "Huh, interesting." Okay. Kind okay. of a bummer, but interesting to know. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Beth, you ever run into any of that with uh, with issues with Zillow? I have not. And I just listed a property and I seem to get leads like right away from it. So, yeah, yeah, it definitely yeah, doesn't happen very often. So it's either. a little bit of an unusual yeah. one. Yeah. So just something definitely something to watch out for. And Greg, is there anything like yeah. for the agent? Is there anything at all that we can even do if it's just not syndicating properly other than do what this agent did and, and kind of check the MLS segments just to make sure we didn't screw up somewhere on the back end? I, this is the first time it's ever happened to us. So, I mean, I don't, I mean, we have, there's actually a, uh, one of my buddies, Murray, he's on the technology board. So he's actually submitted a ticket to CCAR and the MLS, everyone over here to see if there's mm -hmm. something wrong with it. So it could be just a, a glitch with Zillow and Trulia or Redfin. It could just be something out there or someone hit the red switch instead of the blue switch. I don't know. You yeah. know uh, yeah. I was going to say Mar Marta is listening with us live on Facebook and she says uh, matrix is now requiring you mark yes or no for the Zillow update. So there, there might be some local MLSs that have changed the way that they syndicate. This Maybe it's not automatic. There may be a little setting uh, that you have to, you know, a checkbox or something that you have to hit. So who knows? Maybe there's something like that that's going on. I don't know if that would explain yours in your area, Greg, but uh -huh. it might be something uh, for Jessica Kim to look out for in hers and for all of us to keep in mind. So that's interesting, right? Kind of an odd, uh, obscure little problem, but can cause major issues if you're, uh, if you're relying on that, like you said, Greg, with yours. Um, a quick, quick follow-up question on open houses, just because it's right here. Um, Steve Angelina asks, does anybody ever do an open house on Saturday? So I'm curious, Greg, what, how you guys run yours uh, there in the Bay Area? Uh, for us, I mean, we usually just do Sundays. Uh, that's yeah. pretty standard for us here. So, I mean, yeah. Beth, for you, is, is Saturday a prominent day for open houses? Do you get a lot of turnout in your neck of the woods and in Detroit neighborhoods, or is it just Sundays or kind of – or, I mean, what, what, what do you find best in your area? So it's always interest, interesting because we're always in such different marketplaces. Um, yeah. I, we definitely do open houses on Saturdays, and they're very yeah. successful. Normally we'll do them a little bit earlier, like maybe from 11 to 1 instead of, like, the standard 2 to 4, 2 to 5, you know, whatever you, whatever you yeah, do. And even some on Thursday, day. even really? some during the week. Yeah, because <laughs> we have situations where it's multiple offers here, and if something comes on the market, it goes pretty quick. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Like you, yeah. like, like you were negotiating an offer right as we were getting on to the pre-show. You're like, "Hey, yes. sign the fucking disclosures, asshole. <laughs> yes. Let's go here. I got stuff to do. I got money to make." Uh, yeah, because I know in an hour's time they could already get an offer and get it accepted. So in this market, you have to be constantly in communication with the listing agent, and say, "Hey, listen, uh, I'm getting you that information. Please, you know, just." Wait for me, and and so we can get you that information because that house can be gone. It can yeah. be. So why curiosity is killing me right now? So why okay. Thursday open houses? I mean, it's kind of a random day in the middle of the week to to do it. Yeah, open I mean, house. That's, I mean, that's a great question. I think that in this market right now, for us here in the Metro Detroit area, that I think it gives people the sense that they're getting a jump start on the house. Personally, but I think you could do an open house here on Monday and you would still have people show up. It is that crazy here. There's just not enough houses on the market. Yeah, I feel you. We're the same way. I'm, yeah. uh, we're beating the bushes consistently out here in the, on the East Coast. Yeah, good job, Greg. Yeah. West Coast, West Coast, best coast. Got to remember that. <laughs> um, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's a constant uphill battle. But um, we've never done the Thursdays. We've sometimes done Friday open houses. Saturday, okay. yes, here and there, not the hugest turnout, but definitely if you hit Sunday big, you're able to yeah. retain and get a lot of buyers. Like every single time we've had this listing on for 60 days, it is baffling me why this thing isn't selling. It should have sold mm. like that. There's nothing wrong with this house. Great location, great everything. All the rest of the homes are selling around it. 
who knows? Maybe I'm supposed to just keep working Sundays and pick up open uh, buyers on, on open houses. Who knows? But um, do you do you see open houses in your neck of the woods as a great lead generator as well still? Or is it purely just for us getting that home sold and getting exposure out to the marketplace? I think it's all the above. I mean, you definitely can get buyers right now from your open houses. It gives it exposure. Um, you have buyers out there that are desperate. And mm. so you can snatch them as they come through. Yes, you can, like oh. fish in a net going upstream. Like, come here, yeah. little sucker. You're mine. You're dinner. <laughs> well, and it's also if an owner or a homeowner next to that house is looking to purchase, or not purchase, but looking to sell their house as well, it kind of gives them an opportunity to come over and you can talk to them too, right? Everything we learn mm -hmm. about open houses. So, yeah, it's definitely a good thing. So, you want to hear a funny story about that? Um, uh -oh. I was. Uh, I was out at the open house yesterday. This, this couple came through the open house. They're neighbors. They made it very clear. We're not selling our house. We're not selling our house. We're not selling our house. We love this neighbor. We're not selling our house. I'm like, okay. We have, I'm just having a conversation. We're laughing. We're, we're kind of, we're getting below the layer of bullshit down to like some real conversation points. And <laughs> Mr. Mr. Oh, next door, next door neighbor goes, yeah, you know, we've been thinking about selling our house and kind of upsizing. I'm like, didn't you just say like five minutes ago you weren't selling? And so I waited a few seconds. I'm like, so were you guys th are you guys thinking about selling? You could see the look on his face. I'm like, oh, shit. I, I let the cat out of the bag. So, <laughs> so they told me where they lived. I'm going to stalk them like a, like, a, like a cat stalks a mouse. I'm going to pounce when the time is right and be like, rah, rah, mine. But, um, but, yeah, I mean, people will say the darndest things at open houses because, I mean, the, 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 the guard goes up. Because you're an unknown human being to them, basically you're you're relevant to them until that guard comes down and you become relevant because you can build that human connection and then you're able to have a real conversations. I bet them, I bet you've seen this as you're you're a ten year veteran in this when you probably got into the business. Uh, you were probably all excited to get people's information and pick them pick them up at the open houses and you probably went right for the kill way too soon in the conversation, scared them off. And they, and they didn't really ever give you their content information. But as you've grown right. as an agent and as a person, you now wait. You can feel that timing, that dance, right, that energy flow between both sides. And right when the time is right after you've given value, that's when you ask for the content, contact information, and they give it over to you. You've seen yeah. that. You've felt that, right? Yes, yes. And the, the one thing I've learned from you in watching your calls, even it can apply to an open house too, is have you secretly thought about moving? Mm -hmm. You can even, even if it's a neighbor that stops in, you know, because you have the nosy neighbors. And to me, I love them. You know, I'm like, come on in and take a look around. And then you can ask them, have you secretly thought about moving yourself? And that seems to kind of open them up a little bit it and, is what I found. And, you and know I got where, that from you. You know where I got that from? Where? The Grandmaster. <laughs> P. Diddy, me, Papa. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. Yeah, no, it definitely works. We were sitting at lunch one day at this like little burger place, and he goes, "Have you ever thought, been secretly thinking about making a move?" I'm like, "Oh, that shit is good." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wrote that down and never looked back ever. But yeah. you know, I, I, yeah. you know it, Matt, it'd be interesting to just take us here and then just kind of um, first off, Beth. You know, I want to make sure that people, if they're in the Detroit area, if they know somebody or if they need a referral partner, you know, give yes. them your information really quickly so they could reach out to you if, if you could help maybe their client in, in relocating or anything else. So how could people get a hold of you? I mean, they can, I can add a, information onto this if you don't mind. I can give them my information. But I'm Please with Kelly Williams, Kelly Williams in Plymouth, and they can call me directly at 734-419-1888. Uh, emails bestseared at live.com and I'd be more than happy to help them. Because I definitely Perfect. help those two in transition. That is so, a yeah. beautiful thing. No problem. And then yeah. for uh, for guys, for us, for EXP, go to bookmcdaniel.com. Again, that's bookmcdaniel.com. Book 30 minutes with me. Let's talk about EXP. See how you guys can make that transition. If you're thinking about coming on over, come over and see the organization Matt and I are building, how the role you can play in it, you know, how this can we can all work together and everybody can make some money and have a lot of fun. So, Matt, back to you. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, Beth, let's dive into your story a little bit because you've been okay. you've been in the, in the business for a while. But take me back. You know, so you you came up 
kind of came across us on, I think it was YouTube, right? Like just kind of stumbled mm -hmm. across us randomly. You found some other I folks did. on YouTube as well, just like it, but you were looking for educational materials. So why, why after at that point, six, seven years in the business, what were you looking for? Uh, what was the catalyst to where you said, you know, I need to hop on and I need to get some more, some more education and more training. What was the problem going on that you were looking to solve? I think just to increase my business, um, I was on a team and the team leader, she's amazing, awesome, learned a lot from her. She did a lot of door knocking, a lot of phone calls, but I kind of felt like it needed to be a little more fresher. You know, it just felt like it was very rigid, you know, and I was just looking for more information to add to that, to become comfortable with that, to give me confidence. And mm -hmm. so I basically did a search on door knocking and you all popped up with Brian Casella and it really, it changed it everything for me you know really? yeah it did so it gave me the, the confidence yeah, well, like it. yeah i was gonna say so like going back to the the cost so what was your what was your business like at that point like what were you you said like you wanted to grow and you were on a team um but yeah. i take it the team was not as like giving you leads they're basically just kind of telling you what to do and right. not I mean, helping you overcome the obstacles to do it um i mean they definitely helped but with being on a team which is great and fantastic if that's what works for you. Um, but for me, I wanted to grow. I wanted to make more money. So mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out, okay, well, let's give this a try and see how it goes. And I was like a listing agent and a buyer's agent on this team. Um, but like what, finding you all and Brian Casella, it kind of gave me a different perspective in terms of that, you know, you're never, no, I shouldn't say never going to make, um, a lot of money, but it's better to break away, do the listings on your own, you get more money, more leverage. Um, and so that's what I got the confidence from is watching those videos and doing it. So I broke away the end that's of right. October. Breaking, breaking, breaking up teams since 2015. <laughs> Breaking away. <laughs> I broke away. Ran away. Instead of a home, um, a, a, instead of a home yeah. crasher, yeah, you know, you're a team crasher. I'm a uh, team crasher. You're going out and doing your thing. I mean, but what, tell me your, yeah. your your top couple of things that you took away from when you. And I'm not trying to toot our own horns. I'm just trying to get what yeah. what clicked with you when you heard what Matt and I are putting out there, what BC's putting out there. I mean, what was it? So that other people can might know because if they're looking for something to to grasp onto, to to kind of start learning from, or what to look for, because a lot of people just don't know where to start looking for. There's just like, there's a there's so much noise out there that is just right. white noise. It's like being snowblind. So what I was agree. that thing? I agree. I think it it was a good mixture. I mean, my broker um, provides um expireds and fisbos she like gives us a fat list every single morning mm -hmm. but then it's kind of like well what do i do with this now here i have this but what do i do with this now and it can and it can become very overwhelming in terms of what are the next steps and you all kind of break that down a little bit to make it easier you call them scripts uh you practice you can i can watch you do the scripts mm -hmm. and that personally even though i'm not per se doing it at that time it does you, gain, you can gain confidence from that. And there is no magic pill. You just have to do it, right? right. So and that's the thing, too. Yeah. And there's so many different ways to get business. Like, you could do... Absolutely. I, I, yeah. I see my friend Ashley here. Knuckles to you, Ash. I haven't seen her in a while. She worked with me at my old brokerage. But when she started out, she was actually a guest on our show. So go back and watch. Look for Ashley about a okay. year and a half, two years ago. Young gal got into the business. You know, she did it completely unconventional to go out into the business. She went out and did Facebook messages to all of her friends. Okay. I told her that she was going to do way more business than she thought she was going to do in a full year. She did what she was going to do, thought what she was going to do in a whole year in six months, and then just de decimated the rest of the year and just crushed That's it awesome. and like did a huge amount by just doing Facebook messages, right? So yeah. you don't have to do doors and calls. You can do high tech or high touch. Yep. It really depends on what you want to do, yep. right? Right. Um, I mean, so Brian and I always teach about doors and calls. I mean, what's something that you did that you took from the show that you said, oh, I can make that mine? You know, I'm going to do this yeah. my way. Is there something that jumps out at you with that? I mean, the phone calls. To me, that was something that I could do. You know, my background is a little bit of telemarketing. I wasn't really scared about, you know, too too scared anyway to do that. So I just jumped right in and did it, you know. And I think not having, um, because at first you can get overwhelmed by, you know, well, I don't have a system. I, I don't have mojo. I don't have this. I don't have that. To me, you don't need any of that. You don't. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can finger dial. You can 
go off script absolutely to get started. And I was number one listing agent in January, got a team together and was number one team like in March. Nice. So you don't need all those fancy things. You can use like, you know, you all and everybody, the YouTubers that are out there as a resource. Yeah. You so just need, you, just need a, you need a hoops to, uh, just to get started. Like when I got mm -hmm. started after I came back into the business, um, dude, I was flat fucking broke. I mean, I yeah. had 30, I mean, I was fucking broke. Um, yeah. and I, the only thing I had was a shit ton of, shit ton of time. <laughs> so guess what I did? Took my fat little meat stick here and I did that little, 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 dialed everybody in the database, started doing calls, start door work seven days a week, did door knocking, came back, did thank you letters. Then I did calls after that Monday to Monday, no days off. Yeah. And that's where the business really flows. You don't become successful yeah. in this industry by sitting on your ass, eating bonbons, and just looking, staring, you know, you know, very strongly at your cell phone going, ring, right. ring. <laughs> that shit ain't going to work. Right. Your friends, right. Are gonna, your, your friends are going to put you in an institution, but that's not going to get you any business. <laughs> Right, right. Well, there's a good, there's a good lesson in there, Beth, because it, it's something that I've, I, I've been working on with my, you know, my mentor, um, and he puts it this way, and I, and I like the way that he phrased it, which is that everything is just adequate, good, and then great. Like nothing starts out great, especially no, no system, no system of how, you, how do you attract clients, how do you generate leads, how do you, you know, how do you in, install a new marketing system. And uh, it's one of those things where, like, I, I've been dealing with this over the past, let's say, I don't know, month and a half uh, with launching my new podcast and the new Instagram account and getting new staff members involved. And this is all stuff that we've not done before. Now, granted, we've done, obviously, we've launched podcasts before, but um, not not at the frequency that I'm doing it, like, ramp, you know, from going from, like, three days to five days a week. Uh, and so we don't have any, like, track record for it. And so I'm having to, like, you know, remind myself again and again and again, like just get the system adequate, mm -hmm. then get it good, mm -hmm. then get it great. Because yeah. my natural reaction is it's not great, therefore I'm going to throw something. Yes, and I live. Right. With, I've lived with you in business for three and a half years. I know this, Johnson. <laughs> you, do, you, don't, you do know this. Fortunately, when I throw things, they generally are one smaller inanimate object throwing it at another larger inanimate object. Neither of those things involve human beings. Um, That's, good. Granted, That's good. You know, I mean, I, if, it's a, if it's a short person, look out. I may throw you against a wall, but I mean, don't, you know, so if you're short, don't get near me. Arne um, Dodge, she needs to steer clear of you then. Exactly, exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's hard to keep in mind, but it is one of the best things to keep in mind because the, the very successful people, obviously we're always pushing. We're always pushing to make things better. But yeah. we have to get started somewhere, and we have to be okay with the fact that that's the journey that everybody goes through, whether we like it or not. Nothing starts off great. No marketing system, no client attraction system, nothing, no podcast starts off at operating, firing on all cylinders. You get one cylinder, then you get another, then you get another, and all of a sudden you're cruising down the road at seven, or well, in Greg's yeah. case, 110 miles an hour in his <laughs> Jeep SRT, um, so which that was a blast. But yeah, there's there's a really good lesson there for all of us because it's, it's hard to keep in mind. Um, but uh, that that is the one thing. I mean, Beth, you felt it you, when you, you, you you've mentioned a couple of times about getting overwhelmed, and I think that's one of the things that gets us overwhelmed is the idea yeah. that I have to go from zero to 110. That that's what yeah. successful people do. That's actually not what they do. They go from zero to 30, then 60, then 90, then they'll work their way up to racing speed. Uh, we just don't see it until they've hit racing right. speed because that's when they attract attention. That's when, the, you know, like the people that we see being interviewed on podcasts and stuff like that, most people are not going out there and sharing their experience like you are in the midst of building the things that will get you to where you want to go. Most people wait until they've actually already got the stuff built and they're the overnight success. And then they kind of talk about it after the fact, but we don't see them until they've seemingly got everything figured out. You know, and that's that that's makes the rest of us who are sitting back here going, I don't have it all figured out. We think we have to get it all figured out all in one shot, and we don't. So that's what I think that's uh, it's a great part about your story is just just to get started. Um, so you started with the calls. So let's what what are some of the other things that you did get started on that kind of refreshed like and breathed new life into your career? Um, that's honestly that's pretty much what I stuck with is making the phone calls, doing some door yeah. knocking too, mixing mm -hmm. it up. I mean, it was it was winter when that started, and there are people out there that will you know, trudge in that, but, um, we had a pretty rough winter 
<laughs> and I like yeah. warm. So, oh, don't worry. Um, we were there. We were know. there in February. We know all about the Detroit winter. Oh, um, yeah. It was we, not pretty here. It was I had to go outside and walk. Come I had on. to walk from my hotel to the nearest Starbucks. So we, <laughs> we, we did that. And it, it was nice. It was totally nice and yeah, normal. Then you it had just, a blazer. I, I had, snow. I don't know what I had, but it was not, it was not a warm winter coat. Let's put it that way. And uh, so, yeah, we know all about Detroit winter. So that is true. You yeah, guys had a rough winter. Um, yeah, so let's talk about, winter. yeah. So what, what about the, um, let's shift gears a little bit, Beth, and talk about kind of the next steps for you. So based mm -hmm. on where your business is at, what's the next thing that you have your eye on? To open it up more to Facebook, Instagram seems to be like the next, I mean, it seems to be the hot thing to do. And like you were saying before, I just wanted to interject this, is that, Making calls isn't the only way, right? I think you just have to find what you're comfortable with and what works for you because there's a lot of great things out there, and that's the awesome thing about real estate, right? Yeah. You can make it whatever it is that you want to make it, yeah, and I just don't think I don't think most people know that, so I want to right. interject that. Yeah, but I would definitely out. like to jump into Instagram a little more than what I have been, um, and Facebook too. I've done some Facebook live, um, open houses. They seem to get pretty good, review, you know, pretty good views, but yeah. I'd like yeah. to up it a little bit more to get more leads from that. Okay. So how and to help the public, you know, so how too. Consist, here, here's a tip for you right now. Go to, okay. um, realtytimes.com. Okay. And realtytimes.com, go to the consumer advice tab, drop down. There's going to be eight different options. The top six are where you're going to want to live. It's going to be buyer, seller, homeowner, new home, mortgage, and HOA advice. Now just, okay. You can, so you can literally browbeat your 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 public on Facebook and Instagram, um, and read an article. Don't read it on air. Read it, digest it, pick the highlights out, give your okay. opinion. Say, hey, look, guys, I'm coming to you. I have another awesome opportunity to for some more information. Here are the six things you need to do to not screw up your home before you get it on the market. Here they are. Here's my thoughts. Blah 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 blah. Again, this is Beth with KW. Here's my number if you had any additional questions. Header, footer with your information and contact info. Meet okay. of meet of content every day, same time. People know that on Tuesdays it's buyers, Wednesdays it's sellers, Thursdays it's HOA, Fridays it's mortgage. They know what the content cool. is, so they can be willing and able to show up for it. Um, okay, nice. Matt, I didn't tell you this. One of the guys. Um, that had taken that advice and he started putting this kind of content out. Um, he actually, it was from um, James Rembrandt, Rembrandt, uh, whatever, Zillow Killer. Rembert, yeah. Rembert, okay. Zillow Killer. He started doing the videos that James was talking about. He says mm -hmm. that he can't stop not getting talked to in public. Like, I love your videos. <laughs> this is amazing. And now it's starting to get onto the, like that. How can I get onto your calendar to be interviewed? And I'm mm. like, ooh. So. Yeah. Beth, go back and watch James's two episodes with us. Okay. Write down everything James do says that. to do. Yeah. Uh, okay. And just start doing these videos consistently. Uh, okay. And you'll probably start seeing a, a, a bigger in, in, insurgence of uh, people engaging with you and wanting to contact you. Okay. Yeah. No, that sounds good. Yeah, See, understand. and that's why this show is great, right? Yeah. Because you well, get yeah, information amazing, that, amazing. you know, yeah. that's very helpful. So I appreciate that. Wait, wait yeah, till and Nick and I come out with what we're doing, what we have going yeah. on. It'll blow doors on all kinds of stuff. It's gonna take James's idea, and then put Nick's like technical back end to it. Oh my baby cakes! It is, <laughs> it is going to be amazing. And now Matt, you can talk because I've cut you off twice. And my deepest apologies. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> um, I was just gonna say there to, to to add on to that. Uh, so Beth, if you want to get, um, I think the the key that the best thing that I've found to actually turn Facebook and Instagram engagement into actual conversations that lead to like actually sitting in front of somebody with a potential client uh, mm -hmm. is Hank Aving stuff, All right? So Coach Hank, we've had him on the show a couple of times and he talks yeah. about the 50, 25 and one system of 50 okay. likes, uh, 20 comments or, you know, like a digital handshake, five exchanges or, con you know, quick conversations leading to one powerful conversation, hopefully that you have every single day. Um, and so that's a really good, very, very simple system that he teaches in 36 to Life that all of everybody that joins up through EXP gets, you know, a, a slat, like a 99%, it's practically free uh, discount bucks, to take yeah. through us. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just like the admin fee. And so anyway, so that, that's part of his whole 36 to Life philosophy that we believe in. It's one of the reasons why Greg switched over to EXP under, underneath him. Uh, and <laughs> Hank has, he, he built up his coaching practice like that. He built his private real estate business like that. Everybody in his world builds their private real estate business like that. 
Yale Zentech does it, Monic Weekly does it, like everyone that's kind of in Hank's world that follows that little very, very simple structure, uh, yeah. that's really the key because it's very, very easy to focus on the very, very, very top of the funnel, like how many eyeballs you're getting on your Facebook Lives. Um, how many, you know, how many likes did you get on a post? The problem is, is that unless those turn into conversations, they don't actually lead to clients. Like they don't, they, they've got to move them further into the conversation funnel. Uh, and so putting a number on it where we actually focus on, okay, am I having real conversations? Like am I actually connecting with people? Am I actually getting people on the phone and setting some goals around that uh, will greatly help. Uh, and so like that's another one to go back to listen to because uh, it doesn't require spending any money. It's really just a matter of just, getting a little bit more intentional about how we spend our time on yeah. Facebook. Uh, and that's something yeah. I need to get better at too. Uh, yeah. Taking all of our clients or all of our leads or whatever people that we'd like to work with and putting them into a separate list on Facebook. So we can, instead of just scrolling randomly through our feed, we can actually get more targeted about it and scroll through a feed of people that are potential clients and interact with them there to make sure yeah. we're interacting with the right people. So um, yeah, cause if you're, if you're looking to get more into social media as the next way to get more clients, Mm -hmm. um, it really does come down to kind of how many conversations you're actually getting out of that per day. Okay. Um, so th those are some other, for anybody that's, you know, watching, listening, I wanted to bring that up okay. that just the, any, anything, go back and listen to, um, anything with coach Hank Avink, but I think it was the first, the first one or two episodes that we had him on, uh, where okay. he really dove deep into that social media strategy. So, uh, Greg, anything you want to add on, on that before we move on? No, I just say that, you know, pick your, pick your vertical. I know where you're most comfortable and start doing whatever that is. So, you know, if you're comfortable writing, then do some writing, some blogging, uh, social media wise. Uh, if you're comfortable in just speaking, you can go to something like uh, Anchor, you know, the, 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 the app called Anchor. Start doing some just audio recordings. Facebook is coming out with Facebook audio where you can just do your own audio recordings. Mm -hmm. um, but it's even if you feel like Matt and I are very, very comfortable on video. This is kind of our medium. So to go here. Speaking of Hank the Avic, the coach Hank, he just joined us. So oh. welcome, coach. I guess someone tagged like him Beetle on Juice. that. Beetlejuice. I made the mistake of saying his name three times, and now he's here. <laughs> Hank Avick, Hank Avick, Hank Avick. Ah, shit, there he is. No, we love you, brother. Um, we were just talking about kind of what you what, what you teach in 36 to Life and how how impactful it is. And I would say, Beth, no matter what anyone else picks, like you picked a, a vertical, just mm -hmm. start. Like you just started. Yes. Just do just not start. wait for the perfect thing to, 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 yeah. to show itself. It's never going to show up. Just make yeah. it happen. Yeah. That's, a, that's what I'd probably to say with that one. So, um, and what's uh, Beth? What's what's your experience been like? You work with a lot of first-time home buyers, and mm -hmm. I mean, I was just talking to somebody, a good friend of the show, Neely, who's I'm probably not far from you, and she built a, a big portion of her business working with those folks too, and mm -hmm. she was running mm -hmm. up against you know the fact when you have you know a, a lot of those clients, like your life gets pretty pretty crazy yet yeah, and it's very okay. easy to get frazzled so is there anything that you can pass along to people that just on how you stay in control keep them prepared keep them calm you know because there's a lot of people out there like you who like to work with first-time home buyers but they also don't like the flip side of working with first-time home buyers so what can we yeah. do to kind of mitigate that yeah especially in this market when you're it's standard to lose like five houses when you put in an offer because the market's so crazy so yeah. i think it's important to like have a buyer's meeting first bring them into the office, talk to them, let them know, you know, the system to buying a house. Cause there is a system to it right now. So, um, and we kind of have like this buyer's point sheet where what makes their offer a good, strong offer, because when they're coming in, they're hearing it from the news that I don't know about you, but lately I've heard a lot of people say, well, the market's going to crash. And, and um, I'm like, Hmm, I don't know. So I kind of show them, like what things are being sold for how much, how long were they on the market? That way you just educate them and it makes your life a lot easier. Mm. At least that's what I found. Yeah, because they're scared about it. I mean, they're going into doing something they've mm -hmm. never done before. They're taking this massive nest egg that they've been squirrel, squirreling away for God knows how long or maybe right. they lump some from a family member. Yeah. But there's a, there's a number and there's a lot of zeros behind that number. Yeah. Uh, that you know is going to go into this property, and it's 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 one of those things like oh my god, like I have all this money that's going into this property, I got to make sure it's the right one. And right. Um, like I was uh, working with a client the other day, we were making an offer, and she was a little nervous about it. And I said, well, what are you nervous about? Help me understand kind of where your where your holdups are. And so she actually started walking down um, kind of some of her concerns. I said, that's fantastic. You know, let's let's tackle each one of these individually. And so we just halted the whole process and we just started talking about the, you know, what was bothering her. 
And by the end of the end of the uh, conversation, she felt fantastic. She's like, Greg, I feel so much better about this. Now I, I really get, I get the process. I understand. I said, you know what? It's my apologies. I get into real estate agent mode and I just start going because I assume that yeah. everyone's like me and they just get it. And you know what? Sometimes I appreciate you, you dialing it back on me and we're able to, you know, to tackle this stuff. Yeah. Um, so w with your checklist, when it comes to your first time home buyers making an mm -hmm. offer, what does that look like? I mean, so the people that are listening right now, um, is it a written out thing? Is it something in your head? I mean, yep, it's written out. Yep, it's written out. It's like a, it's literally it's like um, it's, I wish I would ha would have it with me and I would show you actually, but it's kind of like points to getting your offer accepted. So maybe something like putting money towards the appraisal, giving free occupancy, um, those kinds of things, and it just if you just tick it off like it's you know writing a letter with some. Um, a picture making it personal mm -hmm. so i mean all those things help with an offer so make, make sure that as a first-time home buyer if you guys are going to buy a house and all of a sudden you see a fifth wheel that looks fantastic you could take it camping don't buy that fucking thing until after you close on the house <laughs> yes or you will not yeah. get the house yeah you know leave that's the atvs at the right. ATV, atv store You're not right your cars right but i find things. if you if you call them into the office and you sit down with them and you go over their concerns and fears, and then you have them kind of, they're sitting there with you as you're searching the internet. So that way you can explain to them and tell them like, this is what's, this is what's to be expected. Um, they get it, they understand, you know, and then there seems to be a less hassle. You know, you show less houses and you get your offer accepted quicker and you can move on. So that's, that's how my game plan is. Cause I want to focus on listing too. So I don't want to be bogged down by a bunch of first time buyers not that I'm going to tell them no, mm -hmm. but I want to make sure that our time is efficient for them and for me. Right. So, so you're doing two things there. You're doing education of the client, of, of the process. You're also doing client control yes. for them as well. So they don't go all running willy nilly all over the yep. place on you. And you can, can you know, keep their expectations managed in yep. the appropriate, you know, with the appropriate outcomes with whatever actions they take. Right. I think it's really important that people understand what you're doing right there, which is a really good move because you're, you pre-planned it out. You said, okay, first time home buyer, here's the list of what's going to happen in this order. Here's what to expect. So when the problem arises, you can see, see right there. We knew this could be a problem because it's right there on this bullet point right there. Request for yeah. repairs. This is our problem here. This is our, our snag point. You know, yeah. let's see happen, what happens here. We'll make a decision as a team to move forward or let it go or make an yeah. adjustment and, and go from there. Um, and I like that a lot because a lot of people, including myself when I started out, um, I did not set the expectations. I let people run all over me yeah. and just do whatever they wanted to do because I didn't know any better. I mean, I had the grandmaster right. to, right. to be my teacher, but he's dad. Right. I mean, who listens to yeah. freaking dad in business? Nobody. Right. Except I should have dramatically, but yeah. I didn't. Don't give me a look, Matt. I, I, I agree. Your dad is fantastic. <laughs> there, there is someone else you should listen to, but that ship has sailed. All right, let's go. Uh, you? And by the way, I like, what, um, I like what you said, that you're a team with your buyer and even your seller. That's a great, that's a great way to say it because then oh, yeah. it's like you're on their side because a lot of times, <gasps> oops, it feels like you're up against each other, you know? The that's audio just got a lot louder. There we go. <laughs> um, you know, the thing that I did on Sunday, Saturday morning is I was, I'm trying to keep this deal and this listing together. And, you know, I started using the verbiage, us, we team, you know, mm -hmm. asking a lot of questions and was able to get them back on the, back on the ship, you know, back happy again, uh, for the yeah. most part, because it, you know, subconsciously I bonded the two of us together. Like it's us, it's my team and your team. Let's put, now we are a team. Yeah. I like together. that. That's nice. Yeah, that's very nice. Nice touch. Makes people feel warm and fuzzy in yeah. all the good places. I love feeling warm yeah. and fuzzy. I watched uh, a Hallmark movie for that exact reason. Um, <laughs> all right. So, Beth, remind people of how they can uh, reach you, how they can connect with you. Um, at, well, on Facebook, and I'll definitely add a comment or two so that way people know. Um, but it's Beth Siegert. Um, you can reach me at BethSiegert at live.com, or you can, you know, call me directly, 734-419-1888. So, Perfect. no problem. Shoot me a text. And, you know, I believe in helping each other, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, there was a comment in here uh, that Veronica has, uh, Veronica Jones from Texarkana, Texas. I love hey, saying hey. Texarkana. Um, she's probably rolling her eyes at me right now. 
But there was, she has a friend, I can't find it in the notes, in the comments here, but in um, in the Detroit area, looking to do something with some units out there. Okay. Oh, Ro- Royal yeah, Oak. In my way. Do you know oh, where yeah, Royal, Royal Oak is a great, yeah, Royal Oak is a great area. All right, Definitely. Veronica, d- Veronica, uh, PM Beth, and get that ball started there and see if there can be some, uh, some synergy. Yeah, right. thank you, Veronica. Yeah. All right, Greg, how do people reach and connect with you? Uh, they called me at 402-443. <laughs> I was getting, oh, that's your number I was giving out. Oh, oh, oh. I, I almost I, didn't catch it. I, I totally, God, you know, 925 and 402, they're so close. <laughs> they're so close on area so codes. Um, so guys, reach out to me. Go to bookmcdaniel.com. Let's book 30 minutes. Find out the organization Matt and I are building nationally and internationally with EXP. Figure out how you can play a very important role in it and how it can really benefit you and your family uh, for the you know the near future and the you know long-term future down the road. Um, and just kind of all the information and cool stuff we're going to be able to give you. And as you guys go out there and spread your wings and fly your freak flag and build your team out there, but be a part of our back end or organization uh, on the international and national level. So bookmcdaniel.com. Do it now. Okay. <laughs> all right. I was like, what make the hell? Sure to, uh, <laughs> make sure to subscribe to the show. <laughs> all right. You can get us on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, whatever your favorite uh, way to consume podcasts is. Or if you just want to go to our website, reuncensored.com, you can get back episodes there, links to everything, all that good stuff. Uh, and then we talked a little bit about live video. So we, uh, we have a free training on that. It's at rockstarlivevideo.com where, Greg, you go deep uh, into not, not just where to find content, but what to talk about, how to physically do the Facebook Lives, how to interact, how to structure them, how to capitalize on them, how to leverage them, all that good stuff. It's four training videos. Uh, take you about a half hour, I think maybe a little longer, to go through all those, but you can actually just watch the first one and get started. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's at rockstarlivevideo.com. It's 100% free, so go grab that. Uh, and then we'll also keep you updated with podcast episodes from there, if you so choose. Uh, but I think, um, yeah, I think that's about it for uh, for today. I think we should put a nice, in honor of the giant red star, we were joking around, Greg and I uh, were uh, the other day at uh, at Katie's, at, at your, your little breakfast Katie's, joint. Katie's Creek. That, uh, yeah, in honor, uh, in honor of my, uh, uh, somebody told me I need to get Russian mob stars tattooed on my <laughs> Which that's, the star on your shirt reminds me of that because it's like the exact density and size that it would be. Um, so in, in honor of that, let's put a nice red red bow upon this episode. All right. In honor of you, Star Tits, we will uh, we will we will we'll do that. Uh, the ironic thing is that uh, I have two angel tattoos right on both sides, both of my chest area, my chest areas, my pecs, chestal, and, in the chestal region, my chestal regions. Uh-huh. Um, and one of my buddies is a super funny kid. He turns to me and goes, "I'm just going to call you Angel Tits from now on." I'm like, "Shut up, Kurt." God dang it. <laughs> um, but, guys, we love you to pieces. Thank you for coming. Thank you for allowing us to bring people like Beth who have put you know, things into action uh, in front of you guys. Again, if you guys um, like the show, please share it. Um, and know, just know that we absolutely love you to pieces. So, until next time, peace out, ninjas.